Hello and welcome to our channel Unit 13 Part 2 Interchange 3 For Sedation Word of exercise number 9 Dent Dented Dented Hit something so that surface was bent and marked Hand To show but not directly what you think or want Got in the hand Got in the verb get the best, got the best possible, got in. O as a sound, T as sub D. Got in the hint, understood an indirect message. Exhausted. H silent, exhausted. Very tired. Ended up. Did something no matter what. Did something no matter what. Yoon. To open the mouth wide, showing lack of sleep. To open the mouth wide, showing lack of sleep. 10. Words of exercise number 10. Suspicion. Suspicion. Doubt. Be silent. Doubt. Production. Expectation. Production. Expectation. 11. Locksmith. Someone who makes and repairs locks. In American, with the O as a sound, locksmith. Someone who makes and repairs locks. Locks, American, British, locks. Tow truck. A vehicle that can pull a car that has broken down or can be driven. This word is American, can. In British, Calm, calm. Dilemma, in a trouble. 14. Prosperous, prosperous, wealthy and successful. Mining town, a place where people took precious metals. Metals, T sub D, in American, British, metals. Like gold or silver, out of the earth. Making their fortune. Become rich. Graveyard. A place where dead people are buried. Put underground. Tomb. Be silent. Cemetery. 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 British cemetery. Flame-like. Like the flames of fire. Ethereally. Very liquidly and lightly. In a way that doesn't seem real. Vanished, disappeared suddenly. Eerie, frightening, frightening often used for something not natural or not understood. Tombstone, be silent, tombstone. A stone that marks a grave, a stone that marks a grave, it usually gives the name and birth and death, death of the person, for the person buried there. Radioactive. Radioactive ore. Of course, radioactive. This is from radioactivity. This is the adjective. A substance or a quality in a substance that sends out a form of energy that's harmful to living things. Radioactive. Radioactive ore. A substance or quality in a substance that sends out a form of energy that's harmful to living things. Rotting matter. American rotting matter. Rotting matter, natural dead substance like plants. Helmet. Protective hats. A protective hat, one hat for one helmet. Helmets, protective hats. Miner. A person who works in a mine. Fortune. Wealth. Wealth, reflection, the image of something in a mirror or on any reflective surface, or in any reflective surface. Not giving or having much light. Damn, not giving or having much light. When I have ing at the end, I can make the g silent. So giving, given, having, having, not giving or not giving or having much light. And now, let's start with the book. 
Exercise number nine, grammar focus. Page 89, exercise nine, grammar focus. Past modals for judgments and suggestions. Judging past actions. You should have called her on the phone. She shouldn't have kept your notes this long. Suggesting alternative past actions. You could have been more understanding. I wouldn't have lent them to her. So these are past models. Models like well would, can could, shall should. We're gonna use the models for judgments and suggestions. For judgments, you should. You should have called her on the phone. You shouldn't have kept your notes this long. So we use here subject should or shouldn't have plus past participle. Past participle call call this is a PP. Keep the past participle kept. For giving suggestion, alternative past action. He could have been more understanding. Being British American Ben, I wouldn't have lent them to her. So here we can use could or would or negative couldn't, wouldn't, have, plus, plus past participle, being, lent. This is verb to be in the past participle, in American, been, British, be. And this is lend, the past participle, lent. Okay guys, so after watching the video and listening to that conversation, we're going to take a look at the grammar that we saw for suggestions. So we saw the the bad side of his personality and the good side of his personality and they were both giving him suggestions about different things in the past. So that's what we're going to look at. Past modals of suggestion to talk about suggestions for things that already happened in the past. So if you remember past modals, we know that the equation for the past modal is a modal verb, then the auxiliary verb have and then the past participle as the main verb, as the action of the entire equation. So, let's take a look at one of the suggestions that his bad side gave him. He said, you should have stayed at the party later. Okay, so if we look at the grammar, we can see that I'm using my past modal. I have the past modal, should have, and also I can use the contraction, which sounds like this should have right so you can say you should have stayed at the party later and again I'm using that past participle now it's a regular past participle in this instance so it looks like the past tense but it's not remember that's the past participle let's look at the other side of his personality you shouldn't have gone to the party again here's my past modal but now it's negative so I only have to put that on there to make it negative you shouldn't have gone to the party and again there's my past participle good so I use should have and shouldn't have to obviously give suggestions about something in the past um, I can use a different one though I can use could have right or in the contraction form could have so you can say you could have stayed at the party later and that's a type of suggestion if you think about it right again I have my past modal and the past participle. Could have is to talk about certainty and speculation like we saw in the previous video but also in the context of giving a suggestion to say this is a possible thing that you could have done and that's a suggestion so we can use it that way. Let's look at another one from his good side. You could have gone home early right again using the past modal could have and the past participle gone right again the part the uh, contraction is could have could have okay the last one we're gonna look at is with a different type of modal using would have so would have is also a past modal using the past participle stayed and I can use the contraction I say I would have so I would have stayed at the party later or his good side I wouldn't have gone to the party again the past modal and the past participle okay so I want to review the three different ways we looked at to give suggestions in the three different modals so if I'm giving a direct suggestion right if I'm like looking at someone and saying you right you 
you should have gone home early or you could have gone home early right so that's what I'm saying something that that person should have done or that person could have done right so oftentimes when I say you should have I could also say he should have right or maybe she should have and the same idea with could have but when I use an indirect suggestion I'm almost pretending to be the person so Dan had some problems and the good side of his personality is thinking well personally if I were you I would have gone home early so what's important to know about using would have is that it's a hypothetical and if we think well I'm pretending to be that person then I'm going to think well personally if I were you I would have gone home early right but this part's not necessary I don't have to use that but I always if I'm giving suggestions with would have I'm always gonna use I why because I'm being hypothetical and I'm pretending to be this person right I'm, pre I'm pretending to be in their shoes as we say and the other ones with should have and could have I always use you because it's a direct suggestion for that person okay so I hope this was helpful in learning the different ways that we use past modals for suggestions using should have could have and I would have alright guys I hope this was helpful good luck and thanks for watching A. Complete the conversations using past models with the verbs given, then practice with a partner. 1. A. I invited my boyfriend over to meet my parents, but he arrived wearing torn jeans. He looked so messy. So here, this is a boyfriend and he's wearing torn jeans. Okay, and he looks messy. Messy, not neat. Well, he dressed neatly. I asked him to wear something nicer. So, what is the answer? B? He could have dressed neatly. He could have dressed neatly. I, I would have asked. I would have asked him to wear something nicer. I would have asked him to wear something nicer. I would have asked. So here, the D, when I add the ED, I'm going to pronounce it the sound. So the answer for number B again, number 1B, could have dressed, would have asked. Number 2, John borrowed my car and dented, to dent the car, like to hit something with the car, so the car is dent. When he returned it, he didn't even say anything about it. He said nothing. He didn't say anything. He tell you, well, I not lend it to him in the first place. He's a terrible driver. He's a very bad driver. So what is the answer number two? He, he should have told you, should have told you, well, I, I wouldn't have lent, I wouldn't have lent it to him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have lent. 3. I'm exhausted, exhausted, very tired, it's silent. I'm exhausted. Mary came over and stayed until 2 o'clock. So Mary visited me and stayed until 2 o'clock in the morning. She not stay so late. You start yawning. Yawning to pretend here that you want to sleep. You open your mouth and you pretend that you want to sleep. Maybe she would have gotten the hint. Maybe she couldn't understand. When you give a hint, you make a movement to tell something but in a direct way. So B, she shouldn't have stayed. She shouldn't have stayed so late. Shouldn't have stayed. You, you should have started. You should have started yawning. Should have started yawning. 4. Tom invited me to play. To play? This is like a movie, a play. But I ended up paying for us both. 
I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have paid. I wouldn't have paid for him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have paid for him. He, he shouldn't have invited. He shouldn't have invited you if he didn't have enough money. He shouldn't have invited you if he didn't have enough money. Part B. Pure word. Think of another suggestion or comment for each situation above. So in number B, you're gonna give the suggestion. You're gonna be number B here. In one, two, three, four, you're gonna be B. So we have here the situation, and you suggest. You give the advice. So this is of course bare work between you and your friend. You should practice it. Exercise number ten: word power reactions. A. Megan's boyfriend forgot her birthday. How does she react? Match each reaction with the best example. So here we have a reaction and an example. So these words, an assumption, a criticism, a demand, an excuse, a production, suggestion, suspicion, a warning. So, number one, an assumption. So number one, F, you must have wanted to break up with me. So this is an assumption, number F. Two, a criticism, a criticism to criticize. To say the bad things and the good things about something. C, you can be so inconsiderate. You can be so inconsiderate. Three, a demand. A demand to ask for something. Three, E. Now you have to take me out to dinner twice. So this is a demand to ask for something. Four, an excuse. An excuse. This is number H. I know you've been busy lately. It just slipped your mind. So you've been busy lately, so it just slipped your mind. Five, a prediction. A prediction to expect something, to predict, to expect something. D, you'll probably, you'll, prob you'll probably forget our anniversary too. Probably. This word in American, probably. And also, probably. So sometimes B is silent, but and sometimes it's not silent. So we have probably, probably, and also, probably. Six, a suggestion to suggest, to give a suggestion, to give a suggestion, to suggest. G, you know you ought to buy me flowers? You know you ought to buy me flowers? Seven, suspicion, suspicion, doubt. B, I bet. I bet you were out with another woman. I bet you you were out with another woman. I bet I guess. I bet you were out with another woman. Eight. A warning. A warning to warn someone. A warning. A. If you do it again, you'll have to find a new girlfriend. If you do it again, you'll have to find a new girlfriend. So, now, let's say the answers again. One F. 2, C, 3, E, 4, H, 5, D, 6, G, 7, B, 8, A. B, group work. Imagine that someone was late for class. Or choose another situation. Give an example of each reaction in the list above. So in this exercise, you're going to tell the class about your reaction. Exercise number 11, listening. What should they have done? What should they have done? Now, here, this is listening. Let's listen to descriptions of three situations. What would have been the best thing to do in each situation? So, in this exercise, you have three answers. You have a situation and three answers. You choose the best answer for yourself. So, you choose the best suggestion. Page 90, exercise 11, listening. What should they have done? Part A. 
Listen to descriptions of three situations. What would have been the best thing to do in each situation? Check the best suggestion. One. Oh no! No! Dennis accidentally locked his keys in his car when he went shopping. When he returned to his car, he couldn't get in, so he decided to try to force the door open. He damaged the door, and it cost him two hundred dollars to get it repaired. Mr. Dennis locked his locked his car, and he forgot the key inside it. So he destroyed the door and damaged it. It cost him about two hundred dollars. So, what is the best suggestion? Dennis should have called the locksmith. Locksmith, someone whose job is to open locks, or he should have broken a window, or he did the right thing. So, what do you think? What is the best answer? So here the answer is gonna vary, but I think the best answer Dennis should have called a locksmith. A locksmith, American, a locksmith. Two. No, no, that's Hello, police. This is an emergency. Diana heard the sound of people fighting in the apartment next door. Then she heard a loud scream. She called the police, but when they arrived, it turned out the neighbor's kids were watching television and had the sound turned up very loud. So Diana heard noise, or some noise, so she called the police. She was afraid that maybe there's a crime or a fight. So. Diana should have turned off her radio to keep out the noise, or she should have called the neighbors to see what was happening, or she did the right thing. She called the police, and when the police came, they found out. They discovered that the kids were watching television. The volume was higher. So, what is the best suggestion? So, any answer here? Could be correct. She should have called the neighbors to see what was happening. She did the right thing because in the USA, if there is something like that, you should call the police. Diana should have turned up her radio to keep out the noise. So I have different answers here. Three. Simon. Hey, what's this? Wow, a gold ring. Simon found a gold ring on a busy sidewalk. It looked like an expensive ring. He wanted to give it back to the owner, but he thought the person who lost it might return to look for it. So he left the ring on the sidewalk. What happened? Simon found a very expensive, valuable gold ring. So, what did he do? Did he take it? Did he give it to the police station? Did he search for the owner? Did he make an advertisement? No. He left it. He left it on the sidewalk. The sidewalk, the pavement, in the street. So, what should Simon have done? Simon should have kept the ring for himself, or he should have taken the ring and called the police, or he did the right thing. So here we have different answers. So maybe the owner, the owner of the ring, will return to search for it. Maybe, maybe, yeah, he should have taken the ring and called the police. B. Per work, what would you have done in each situation in part A? So in every situation, what about you? What would you have done? Exercise number twelve: Discussion. You could have group work. Read each situation. Say what are you, what you could have or should have done. Example: 
I went to my neighbor's house for dinner. I went to my neighbor's house for dinner last night. He had cooked all day. He had cooked all day. But the food was awful. Was off was too bad. I don't want to I didn't want to hurt his feelings. So I ate it. I ate it. I couldn't say it's awful. So Say what you could have or should have done. What about you? So this is for number one. I can say this is like A, B, and C. We'll make a discussion. You should have told them you weren't feeling well. Or you could have eaten, you could have eaten it really slowly. See, I think I would have, and you try to suggest the best answer for this situation. I didn't have any money to buy my cousin's birthday present. I didn't have any money to buy my cousin a birthday present. So I gave her something. I gave her something I had received previously as a gift. So I gave her a present, a gift which was for me in the past. My brother told my cousin and now she's mad at me. My brother told my cousin and now she's very angry at me. When you, when you are mad at someone, that means you are very, very angry. A third situation. My friend forgot to do her homework. So, she asked if, if she could look at mine. I did mine, but I told her I hadn't. Situation number four. My friend started dating his, this guy I don't really like. So my friend started to date, to date, to have a relationship, to have a romantic relationship with someone I don't really like. She asked what I thought of him, and I told her the truth. So I told her the truth, that this guy is not a good person. So say what you could have or should have done. Exercise number 13. Writing. A complicated situation. Think of a complicated situation from your own experience. Write a paragraph describing the situation, but don't explain how you resolved it. Now, this is like a situation for writing. One friend of mine is very demanding of my time. He wants to do everything with me, and I have a hard time saying no. I can't say no, he likes me a lot. I have other friends and I want to spend time with as well. Last night, he asked me to spend all day Saturday with him. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. So, B, pair work, exchange papers. Write a short paragraph about how you would have resolved your partner's situations. So here, this is pair work between you and your friend. You start together to solve or resolve the situation or solve the problem. C. Peer work. You read your partner's resolution to your situation. Tell your partner how you resolved it. Who the resolution was better. So here you tell the class about the best solution for the problem. The blue lights of silver clef. This is exercise number 14. Reading. Look at the picture. What do you think the blue lights are? So here. You look at the picture, where are the people? There are some people, they're wearing uniforms, so maybe they are workers. And where are they? This is a tomb. We have a lot of graves. So, where are the blue lights? Let's read. Today, the town of Silver Clef, Colorado, has a population of only 100 people. So now, the number of people in, in Silver Clef, Colorado, about 100 person. Once, however, it was a prosperous, a prosperous mining town, a prosperous, successful, wealthy and successful mining town, mining town. A town where people search for metals. 
metals such as gold, silver, where thousands came with dreams of finding silver and making their fortune and making their wealth and become rich, to be rich. So what happened? Late one night in 1880, a group of miners were headed back to their camp after a good time in town. A group of miners, miners, workers, or people who work in a mine, were headed back to their camp after a good time in town. They were returning back after they spent good time in town. They were still laughing and joking, they still jokes, as they approach it, approach to come closer. They approached, they came closer, and they came closer to the graveyard. A graveyard, the graveyard, a tomb, a place where we bury dead people. The graveyard on a hill outside Silver Cliff. Silver Cliff, this is the name of the area. Then, one of the men yelled and pointed toward the graveyard. One of the men yelled, yelled, shouted, pointed toward the graveyard. He pointed, he pointed at the two. The others fell silent. On top of each grave, they saw flame-like blue lights. Blue lights like flame, like fire. These aerial lights seem to be dancing on the graves. These lights seem to be dancing on the graves. Disappearing and then appearing again. Disappear and appear. So, something appeared and showed and then disappeared, vanished. So, what's this? What was that? They were very frightened. This thing was like fire, but it's not fire. And it's not real fire. This was the first sighting. This was the first sighting of the blue lights of Silver Cliff. There have been many other sightings over the years. So over the years, different people, different workers saw these flames like. They saw these lights. In 1969, Edward Lenham from National Geographic magazine visited the graveyard. Lenham's article tells of his experience. So, when the journalist went there, he started to tell his experience. What did he say? He said, I saw them. Damn round spots of blue-white light. So, them round spots round spots of blue white light glowed glowed to glow they glow as if they are lights among the graves i stepped forward for a better look so i stepped he stepped he walked toward this fire, these flames, they vanished, they disappeared. I aimed my flashlight at one airy glow. He aimed his flashlight to one of these, to one of these blue lights and switched it on. It revealed only a tombstone. Tomb, be silent, stone, this is a tombstone. It revealed a tombstone. A tombstone, this is like a stone where people write the name of the person who died, his birth and his death. His birth and death, death. Lenham and others have suggested various explanations. They have suggested different explanations for the lights. The lights might have been reflections of lights from the town. It's a reflection. If this is when you have a picture of a mirror on the mirror of or reflective surface. 
of light from the town, but Silvercliff's light seemed too dim to have this effect. They were too dim. So, they could have been caused by radioactive ore, a radioactive ore such as uranium and radioactive substance, which what we call like very harmful substance such as uranium. So, there is no evidence of radioactivity. Scientists went there, but there is no evidence of radioactivity. They may also have been caused by gases from rotting matter. They may also have been caused by gases from dead things, dead ashes. This usually happens in swamps. So in the swamp, they have such things. However, and the area around Silver Cliff is dry. In the swamp, we have a lot of water, but Silver Cliff is dry area. Or perhaps the lights are from the helmets of dead miners. Helmets, you know the helmet, a protective hat, a protective hat. Perhaps the lights are from the helmets of dead miners wandering the hills in search of their fortune. So at the end, the writer was laughing and said perhaps the lights are from the helmets of dead miners, the helmets of dead people. And they were wandering, they were searching for, they were searching for their fortune, for their wealth, to be rich. So maybe the lights come from the helmet. This is a helmet. A. Read the article, then answer these questions. So here, after you read the article, answer the following question. Number one. How has Silver Cliff changed over the years? So this is the answer going to be in paragraph number one. Here. Now, population. Today, the town of Silver Cliff, Colorado, has a population of only 100 people. So now, there are only 100 people. But in the past, it was a, pros a prosperous, a prosperous mining town where thousands came with dreams of finding silver and making their fortune. But in the past, it was a prosperous mining town where thousands of people lived there. Question number two. Where? Where were the blue lights first seen? In a graveyard on a hill outside Silver Cliff. Three. Who saw the blue lights first? A group of miners. What do the blue lights look like? The blue lights are eerie. They look like flickering, flickering candle flames, dim round spots of blue-white light. B. Which of these statements are facts, which are opinions? Check true, fact, or opinion. So in this exercise, you have fact or opinion. If it's opinion, it's a point of view, it's an opinion, it means it's an explanation, but it's not true 100%. This is just your guessing. Number one. Today, the town of Silver Cliff has a population of 100 people. This is, of course, fact. The number of people is 100. Number two. The miners saw flame-like blue light on top of each grave. This is fact, because different people saw it. Edward Lenham suggested various explanations for the lights. Yes, this is fact, because Mr. Edward has different explanations. Not one, but different. Three, four. Four. The lights were actually reflections of lights from the town. So until now, we don't know. So this is opinion. So number four, opinion. Five. There, there, was, there was no evidence of radioactivity. This is fact, because scientists have machines and tools, they didn't find 
any proof for radioactivity for radioactivity or six the lights were from the helmets of dead miners this is of course opinion this is not fact c group work which of the explanations for the blue lights do you think is the most satisfactory why can you think of any other possible explanations so this is between you and your friends you have to tell the class what is the best explanation and what do you think about it wish you all the good luck that's the end of unit number 13 part 2 and now let's get the homework number one keep the words by heart two listen and repeat three answers three pages of the workbook the last three pages of unit 13 workbook interchange three workbook four watch the video of mr kyle ralphson the grammar video is a wonderful one five go to www.cambridge.org slash interchanger kate slash six watch the video watch the video of cambridge university about unit 13 interchange 3 fourth edition finally hope you like it share it and subscribe wish you all good luck and thanks for watching 11 locksmith someone who makes and repairs locks in america with the o as a sound locksmith someone who makes and repairs locks locks american british locks Tow truck, a vehicle that can pull a car that has broken down or can be driven. This word is American, can. In British, calm, calm. Dilemma, in a trouble. 14. Prosperous, prosperous, wealthy and successful. Mining town, a place where people took Precious metals, metals, T sub D, in American, British, metals, like gold or silver, out of the earth, making their fortune, become rich. Graveyard, a place where dead people are buried, put underground, tomb, be silent, cemetery, cemetery, cemetery. British cemetery. Flame like, like the flames of fire. Ethereally, very liquidly and lightly, in a way that doesn't seem real. On any reflective surface, or in any reflective surface. Not giving or having much light. Damn, not giving or having much light. When I have ing at the end, I can make the g silent. So giving, given, having, having, not given or not given or having much light. And now let's start with the book. Exercise number nine, grammar focus. Page eighty nine, exercise nine, grammar focus. Past modals for judgments and suggestions. Judging past actions. You should have called her on the phone. She shouldn't have kept your notes this long. Suggesting alternative past actions. You could have been more understanding. I wouldn't have lent them to her. So these are past models. Models like well would, can could, shall should. We're gonna use the models for judgments and suggestions. For judgments, you should. You should have called her on the phone. You shouldn't have kept your notes this long. So we use here subject, should or shouldn't, have, plus past participle. Past participle, call, call, this is a PP. Keep, the past participle, kept. For giving suggestion, alternative past action. He could have been more understanding. Being British, American, Ben. I wouldn't have lent them to her. 
So here we can use could or would or negative couldn't, wouldn't, have, plus, plus past participle, being, lent. This is verb to be in the past participle. In American, been, British, be. And this is lend, the past participle, lent. Okay guys, so after watching the video and listening to that conversation, we're going to take a look at the grammar that we saw for suggestions. So we saw the, the bad side of his personality and the good side of his personality and they were both giving him suggestions about different things in the past. So that's what we're going to look at. Past modals of suggestion to talk about suggestions for things that already happened in the past. So if you remember past modals, we know that the equation for the past modal is a modal verb, then the auxiliary verb have, and then the past participle as the main verb, as the action of the entire equation. So let's take a look at one of the suggestions that his bad side gave him. He said, you should have stayed at the party later. Okay, so if we look at the grammar, we can see Hello and welcome to our channel, Unit 13, Part 2, Interchange 3, for sedation. Word of exercise number 9, dent, dented, dented. Hit something so that surfs was bent and marked. Hand, to show but not directly what you think or want. Got in the hand, got in. The verb get the best, got the best parsable, got in. O as a sound, T as sub D. Got in the hand, understood an indirect message. Exhausted. H silent, exhausted. Very tired. Ended up. Did something no matter what. Did something no matter what. Yoon. To open the mouth wide, showing lack of sleep. To open the mouth wide, showing lack of sleep. 10. Words of exercise number 10. Suspicion. Suspicion. Doubt. Be silent. Doubt. Production. Expectation. Production. Expectation. Vanished. Disappeared suddenly. Eerie. Frightening. Frightening often used for something not natural or not understood. Tombstone. Be silent. Tombstone. A stone that marks a grave. A stone that marks a grave. It usually gives the name and birth and death, death of the person. For the person buried there. Radioactive. Radioactive ore. Of course, radioactive, this is from radioactivity, this is the adjective. A substance or a quality in a substance that sends out a form of energy that's harmful to living things. Radioactive, radioactive ore. A substance or quality in a substance that sends out a form of energy that's harmful to living things. Rotting matter. American rotting matter, rotting matter, natural dead substance like plants. Helmet, protective hats, a protective hat, one hat for one helmet. Helmets, protective hats. Miner, a person who works in a mine. Fortune, wealth, wealth, reflection. The image of something in a mirror or 